Hello, Alex here, and in this video I want to give a practical answer to the question, what DPI should you be scanning your instant film at? There are an infinite number of combinations of scanners and software and settings and unsharp masks and everything you could go with, but I think I have a decent justification for my personal answer of probably 1200 DPI. So let's get into it. Instant film is great. You get to see the results quickly and they're tangible and you get to share the experience of seeing the picture with your friends and family. I've been shooting a lot of instant film this year and I've been trying to think about how best to go about scanning it. DSLR scanning was a bit too awkward for me and I don't own a sufficiently high quality polarizer for scanning so I've been using my Epson V600. Now, okay, the V600 is not the highest end flatbed scanner, I know. You can't autofocus, it caps out at 2400 dpi optical resolution, but it's affordable and it's a very realistic option for someone who wants to just digitize their Instax photos or their Polaroids without just taking a picture on their phone. You know, it's a noticeable step up from just taking a phone picture and it's probably more than good enough as you'll see. Yes, something like an Epson V750, V850 or other things from other brands, I don't know other brands' lineups very well, will be significantly better. Yes, my GFX 100S would be significantly better. I tried it and it is. It had better be better, it's 20 to 40 times more expensive. Of course it's gonna be better, but that's not the point. And if you think a GFX or a similar camera is the correct answer for scanning instant film, you're honestly kind of gear jerking and missing the point. I'm talking about what's reasonable for a normal person to get good results out of instant film. Yes, a V850 is going to be significantly better for scanning photographic film. But instant film isn't as sharp and the cameras that they go into don't have as good lenses. I mean, okay, forget about your classic 100, 200 euro Instax cameras. Think about the Mint or the new Polaroid uh, i2. I think it's the i2. With their glass elements in their lenses, they're still not as sharp as a normal glass lens on a normal photographic film. So those high-end scanners are way beyond what's necessary for instant film. I took a bunch of instant photos across a range of formats with a range of different camera types and camera lens types, and I scanned them all with the same settings, except for the DPI, which I ramped up from 400 to 3200. You'll see, going above it is probably not worth it. And the only other thing I changed was for the black and white Polaroids, I set it to grayscale to save a little bit on the file size. The colors are a bit off in a lot of these images because my V600 imparts a bit of a red cast when I scan in document mode, and I do have a Lightroom preset to correct that, but for this video, I just took the images, imported them, did my various crops and whatever, and re-exported directly without touching them. I'm going to flick through these fairly quickly, but if you want to look at the pictures on your own time, I'm going to take the TIFFs that came out of the scanner, not even the JPEG versions that went into the video, upload them directly to Flickr in their full quality, completely untouched, and put them in an album down below so you can have a look for yourself. Firstly, Instax Square in the Mint SF70 with a glass lens. 400 DPI is very obviously pixelated, 800 is way better, and 1200 is a bit better again. 2400 is about the same as 1200, maybe with a little bit more contrast where those edges and high contrast transitions are a little bit more well-defined. 3200 though looks about the same as 2400, maybe even a little softer. Second, the Polaroid 1-step 600 with Polaroid 600 film. The Polaroid 1-step 600 is a fixed focus camera with a plastic lens, so nothing is really sharp here, so keep your expectations in check. 400 dpi again looks really bad, but honestly, all of the other resolutions kind of look the same due to the limitations of the fixed focus distance and just the generally poor quality of the plastic lens this camera has. Next is Instax Wide in the Lomo Graph Lock using my large format camera and a high-end Schneider lens. Again, the jump from 400 to 800 to 1200 dpi is similar to Instax Square, which makes sense, it's essentially the same thing. 2400 doesn't really look much better than 1200 here, and 3200 is actually visibly worse than 1200 this time. Next is Polaroid Type 52, Polapan 400 in 4x5 format. 400 actually looks pretty awful here, 800 is significantly better, 
and 1200 looks good. 2400 DPI does look a little bit sharper, but the interpolation at 3200 just makes the grainy noise in the shadows all smeary and also kind of over sharpened at the same time. Lastly, Fujifilm FP100C in 4x5 size, again in my large format camera, this time with a Roden stock lens. This is the highest resolution film of the bunch, so I had the highest expectations, and I know from the GFX scan that there is actually a lot of detail to potentially capture. 400 DPI is as bad as expected, 800 is better but still not very good, and 1200 DPI captures quite a bit more fine detail, which you can see in the flaking paint quite strongly. 2400 DPI resolves a little bit more detail, but the difference is somewhat modest. It's a bigger difference than with the other stocks, but it's not tremendous. Having seen the GFX scan, I think we're just at the limit of what the V600 can do at this point. And I don't think it's a focusing issue with the inability to actually focus because the dust on the print is pretty sharp. So I don't think that's the issue. It's just that the GFX is a lot sharper and 2400 DPI is only 2400 DPI. I'm not too sure about 3200 DPI here. It looks like it might be very slightly cleaner in the shadows, but it's such a dark image. It's not easy for me to say whether it's actually interpolating the noise away well, or if it's just smearing it out and I just can't see it that well. Of course, the image quality isn't the only thing that matters. There are two other factors to consider, the time it takes to scan and the actual file size of the resulting image. Here are some tables of the scan time and file size for each photo format as measured by me with a stopwatch and just looking at the metadata for the file size. Now my point here is not to say that an Epson V600 is the correct scanner or the best scanner for scanning instant film. It's not. But my point is that even a V600, which is regarded as quite a good scanner for everything except 35mm, is more than good enough. Even below its true maximum resolution, we are out-resolving, or at least practically out-resolving, what these instant films can do. And I'm using them, apart from the Polaroid 600, with very good glass, you know, some of the best lenses you can put in front of these formats. So if you're using them with a normal Instax camera, the quality will be lower because you're using probably plastic lenses. So you can get away without 6400 or 9600 DPI because it's not necessary. If you're using a zone focus or fixed focus instant camera, just scan at 800 DPI, maybe even 640 if you're using a really poor quality camera because you're not going to get any benefit by scanning any at a higher resolution. 1200 DPI seems to be a good sweet spot for instant film where you can actually focus, even if you're not using an ultra high-end camera. Something older with a decent lens like an SX70 is still probably going to be good enough at 1200. It's going to be better than 800, but not necessarily good enough for 2400. Certainly I don't see a point based on these results of scanning my uh, instant film, my Instax film at 2400 DPI. There is a small improvement, I don't think it's worth it. The Polaroid Type 52 and Fuji FP100C, the two 4x5 films, were kind of just included because I have them and they are instant films, so why not include them in this test? 2400 DPI is definitely the best option, it's the highest that this scanner can actually do. And that's probably what you should do if you're looking for the highest quality scans. Regardless of what your scanner is, find out its true optical resolution and scan at that resolution. That will give you the best results for like, archival time to scan and you know file size be damned. That said, I'm probably still going to keep scanning it at 1200 dpi, which is what I've been doing for the whole year so far. Why? Because instant film is a novelty. If I wanted really high quality, I'd break out the Ektachrome, the Portra, the Velvia, and just scan it with the GFX100S. 1200 dpi is more than good enough and it gives a 24 megapixel scan for a 4x5 image anyway. That's more than good enough in reality. So there is no one size fits all answer and this test was pretty surface level, not the most in-depth thing I've ever done. And that's kind of the point with instant film, not to be super duper technical, but just good enough, right? And for good enough, 1200 DPI seems to be good enough. That's all I have to say for this video, so stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at chaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you liked this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.